Hello, welcome or welcome back. My name is Ari and today we are watching a haul that I made two years ago in February of 2021 and seeing what I hauled have I read the books? Are they still setting unread on my TBR shelf? And picking at least one book from the list and reading it at the end of this video, reading and talking about it at the end of this video. So my goal for this is because it's February, it's Black History Month in America and Canada, I am hoping there's at least one book that I haven't read already by a black author on this list and that's the book that I'm going to choose. Uh, I mean it's also kind of hopeful that I've already read all the books that I had by black authors on this list but I know me. Stack number one is my book box book. We're going to start out with this one which is The Resisters by Gish Jin. Alright the first book up is The Resisters by Gish Jin. I have read that. Um, since recording this video it, it wasn't very good. Um, I, I think it was mostly like not my taste in books, not necessarily a bad book itself. Next up is my Book Nerds Essential box and they sent me Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This is the first box I've gotten from this company. Alright, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray ba Bradbury. I read that before I even got it in this box. Um, so yeah, definitely read that. I I know this is a really popular dystopian, but it was just never great to me. The ending was so bizarre. Next up for my piece and pages is Miss Subways by David Duchovny. All right, Miss Subways by David Duchovny. Uh, this is the first time I even knew that David Duchovny wrote books, so that was new to me. But yeah, I read this. Um, I don't really remember it. <laughs> so I'm guessing I probably gave it a three stars and it wasn't good but it also wasn't bad so if it sounds interesting to you I would say definitely pick it up but it's not something that you should go out of your way to acquire if you've never heard of it before. Next from my Feminist Book Club box I got The Body Is Not An Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. The Body Is Not An Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor I believe as soon as that was by Renee. I remember not liking this but I can't tell you why. I had like read it two years ago but yeah I can't remember why I didn't like this. I think it was self-help. Yeah I hate self-help and I think it was self-help and that's why I didn't like it. Next from my Introverts Retreat box was Small Silent Things by Robin Page. Next up was Small Silent Things by Robin Page. I DNF'd this book. Uh, there were some really uncomfortable sex scenes in this book where people were fantasizing about things they shouldn't be fantasizing about at all. Uh, a lot of consent issues and stuff like that. Like I just, it made me uncomfortable in a bad way and I decided just like, you know what? Not interested in this. Uh, let's let's move on. Next up from my Coffee and a Classic, I got the William Shakespeare's Tragedies. Next up was the Coffee and the Classic, which was the William Shakespeare Tragedies. Um, I Coffee and the Classic isn't something I read, so I'm sure I've read all of the tragedies in my lifetime. I just haven't read them directly out of that book. From my unplugged book box, the Mask of Mirrors by M. A. Carrick. And the final book box book in there was The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. I have read that. I have actually read the second book in that series as well. I really really enjoy that series um, and if you're into like political high fantasy, actually I would just say political fantasy. It's not high fantasy but if you're into political fantasy I definitely recommend it. It's a very very good series um, and I am ready for book number three to come out whenever that does come out. I don't know. I don't think it has a release date yet. This next stack is what I bought for myself. The first book in this stack that I want to talk about is Black Madness Mad Blackness. So the next book up there was Black Madness Mad Blackness I believe is what it's called. I can't see it on the screen. Uh, this was a non-fiction book about the intersectionality between blackness and uh, being considered like insane or insanity and stuff like that. Um, this was an academic paper which I didn't realize when I had purchased it so 
while it gave very interesting like observations it was also very very dry and boring and did a lot of like the author of this paper quoting her colleagues papers so her colleagues would quote her papers in their future papers. <laughs> I hope that made sense. That happens a lot in academia. Uh, so basically interesting information told in the most painfully boring way possible. Next another book that I bought for Blackathon and that was Kindred, the graphic novel by Octavia Butler. Next up is Kindred, the graphic novel, which I had read that year. Um, the graphic novel is good, but I think the actual book itself is better. Very tough story, but it's very cool sci-fi. Uh, definitely go with the actual physical book instead of the graphic novel. And I don't think I recommend this for children either because of the graphic content of it. Next I read Stamped by Ibram X. Kennedy and Jason Reynolds. Next up was Stamped by Ibram X. Kennedy and Jason Reynolds. That was fantastic. Super, super fantastic. Highly recommend. This is the young adult version and there's an adult version, there's a kid version. Um, but it's like black American history from like actual black people. I also bought the original which was stamped from the beginning. The next one uh, on here was stamped from the beginning which I I have stamped from the beginning as well. I have not read this but this is a, the definitive history of racist ideas in America. So this one is for adults. Stamped which I have read is for chill or teenagers. Um, and then the stamped was by Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi. So basically Jason Reynolds took this book and then toned it down for children. Um, this one's for adults. It's a possibility, but this is like 560 something pages, five, almost 600 pages. So I don't know if I'm gonna have time to read this whole thing this month with everything else that I want to do. So let's see if there's something a little bit shorter on here, but if not then this one is definitely doable and a contender. Battle Royale. Alright, Battle Royale. I have not read this either. This isn't any more of a contender than that is. Actually this is less of a contender. First it's not by a black author and it's longer. This is like 700 pages. <laughs> so this is definitely not getting read this month but it is still unread and I need to read it at some point this year just not right now. The last section is the Libro FM picks. The first book that I got it was 400 Souls edited by Ibram X. Kennedy and Keisha N. Blaine. And now we're going into the audiobooks from Libro FM. I am again part of the influencer program for Libro FM and they give me like a selection of audiobooks to download for free each month. The link to sign up is always down in the like description if you ever want to sign up for that instead of using Audible. Um, but yeah, use my link, use somebody else's link, I don't care. It's just there if you want it. <laughs> Live your best life. Uh, the first one is 400 Souls by Ibram X. Kendi and Keisha Blaine. I have read this one. It was interesting but like the idea of it is interesting but I don't think how it ended up being executed really really works. And basically what it is is 400 years of black history in America and it's divided up into sections and somebody writes a story based off of like a few years at a time, right? While that seems like a cool idea, giving equal weight to every four years over a 200 year period doesn't really make sense because there will definitely be years where there's so much more going on in black history that needs more weight to it while there's other years while, where not a whole lot at all is going on. 
interesting, definitely a like supplemental black history book that you should definitely read if you are more advanced in your knowledge of black history and your learning or whatever uh, but not like this isn't where you should base like the start of learning about uh, not whitewashed black history. The next book that I got was Milk Blood Heat by Dentel Moynez and next up is Milk Blood Heat by Dentel Moynez. This is something that I have not read it is a short story collection by a black author so pending anything else <laughs> uh coming up that's that i want to read more than this later on in this video this is what i'm going to be reading for this video like i said short black author short story collection y'all know i love short stories so this is this is looking like our pick Firekeeper's Daughter by Angelina Belay. Bully? Belay? I have no idea how to pronounce her last name. Next up is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully, I believe is how I decided to pronounce her last name. Uh, I have read this. It is very good. Uh, it's young adult about an indigenous girl uh, struggling with her identity and it's it's great even if you don't really like young adult i definitely recommend this if if you are ever interested in picking it up it is long but it doesn't feel long when you're reading it and then the final book that i picked up from libro fm is women and other monsters by jess zimmerman and it sounds like the final one i have here is women and other monsters by Tess Zimmerman? I don't know, it's cut off on my screen. Or her, the first part of her first name is cut off. I have read this one. I remember thinking it's like this is interesting but I don't like it. <laughs> so if I remember correctly she is comparing or she's talking about how women are made monstrous in like different types of mythology uh in an excuse to like blame women for things and then i think it's interspersed with like her personal experiences i could be wrong about that but i just remember being like you know what this is fine but i didn't love it apparently that's everything yay i'm done with the haul uh, so i'm going to be reading milk blood heat and i will come back and talk about it whenever I'm done with it. I have finished Milk Blood Heat by Dentel Moynez. It was very short. Um, it's just a collection of short stories. They apparently all take place in the suburbs of Florida according to the blurb but it doesn't feel like it took place in any specific location. So this is kind of ordinary everyday stories but like the worst things that could happen every day. Let me see if I can give some examples without really spoiling everything. There's a short story about postpartum depression, there's a short story about suicide, there's a story about a pastor who is trying to sexually abuse a teenager and how that pastor is gaslighting that teenager uh, where like the family believes the pastor instead of the teen. You have like parental issues where it's like children are or adult children are reliving horrible experiences with their parents it's just things like that where it's all very commonplace but it's like the darkest part of commonplace it is the best way i can describe it the writing in here is immaculate like immaculate storytelling even though these are short stories you quickly form attachments to the mental health struggles of these characters and it's like very quick short little easily consumable things but you feel emotion for each of these stories and each of these characters uh, even in the short amount of time that you're with them so 
I definitely recommend because it's fantastic. I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook was great. I don't have a physical copy, so I don't know how well it actually like reads on page, but definitely recommend the audiobook. And the only thing I would say is if like these are dark topics like I just said and if you aren't in a mental headspace to handle these dark topics this probably isn't for you because it's going to make you depressed but yes very very much recommend this if you're trying to find something to read for Black History Month uh, this is by a black author and I believe all the characters in here are black but they're not like explicitly black like blackness is not a part of most of the stories, though it is a part of some, these are experiences of black people, if that makes sense. So like as me as a white person, I could read this and relate to them, although I am not black for the majority of the stories, but not all of them, because there are some that do deal with racism. I do not experience racism because I am white. But yes, I think this is great for anybody to read, um, especially if you are struggling with mental health and you want to see like that you're not alone. I don't know how well that would work because I'm not struggling with mental health. So it may make it worse and it may make it better. Talk to your psychologist or psychiatrist about that. Not to me, not my specialty. Anyway, it was great. I recommend it. I'm glad I chose this to read instead of the really long ones. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you have any really, really old books <laughs> uh, from like two years or more ago that you're like, wow, Thanks, Ari. I should have definitely read this before now, and now I'm going to put it on my TBR. Uh, I will see you in the video on Tuesday. I don't know off the top of my head what it's going to be, but there will be one. Bye.